So we're going to have a quick look at a couple of questions from the homework. So question nine, um, it tells you about a couple of equations of lines, and it looks like there's a couple of unknowns in this first one that we've got here. And first of all, it says that they're perpendicular to each other, so show that Q is equal to four. So what do I need to do if they're perpendicular? The dot product of what? Yeah, of these two things here has got to be one. Why is that um, come up really funny? It's come up as the highlighter for some reason. Let's get rid of that. That's really weird. There we go. So we'll do the dot product of minus 1, 3, 2, dotted with Q2 minus 1. That's got to be equal to 0. So you get minus Q plus 6 minus 2 equals 0. So Q equals 4 for that part there. The pen seems really thin. Let's do it like that. Um, then it says that they intersect each other, so find the value of P. Intersect means make these two things equal. So we end up with 8 minus lambda, 2 plus 3 lambda, minus 12 plus 2 lambda is equal to minus 4 plus 4 mu, because Q is 4, 10 plus 2 mu, and P minus mu. Whoops, that should have looked like a P there. So we can just solve the two simultaneous equations at the top, which is 8 minus lambda equals minus 4 plus 4 mu, and 2 plus 3 lambda equals 10 plus 2 mu. What does that give you for lambda and mu, just to save me a bit of time here? Has anyone done that? Mu is 2 and, is two and lambda is 4. So now we look at the k component, and we can say that minus 12 plus 2 times lambda, which is 8, is equal to p minus uh, mu, which is 2. So then you get minus 4 plus 2 equals p. So p is equal to minus 2. Is that right? Yes. OK, so p is equal to minus 2. Um, let's just get the page extender on for a second. Part C of the question says that the coordinate, find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So that is going to be now when lambda is equal to 4, I can substitute into one of these parts that we've got here. So if lambda is equal to 4, the intersection point would be 8 minus 4, which is 4, 2 plus 12, which is 14, and minus 12 plus 8, which is minus 4. So we've got 4, 14, and minus 4. Um, it's often good to look back at the question, see if it's got anything to do with these kind of things, but uh, it doesn't seem to. So let's go back to where we were. It then says the point A lies on L1 and has position vector blah, 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 and the point C lies on L2. Given that a circle with centre C cuts the line L1 at points A and B, find the position vector of B. Well, there's a lot of information they've already given us in the question previously, so we need to make sure that we can construct what's happened. Now, I would draw a sketch of this. If I was going to draw a sketch of this, I need to think about what my two lines look like when I draw the sketch. Normally, I'm just going to do two lines that are intersecting each other, but they've told me something specific about these two lines. They're perpendicular. So I want, because perpendicular is such an important property, I want to do them as perpendicular. So I get L2 and L1, and it's told me that A lies on L1 and has a particular position vector, so maybe that's over here. Um, we know that the point where they intersect was the point P. And it says that C uh, lies on L2 and that a circle with centre C cuts the line L1 at A and B. So if I have a point C here, which is going to be the centre of a circle, if I draw what that circle is going to look like, which I can do with this, it's going to pass through A and B. So... That's it passing through A here. So the other place where it would pass through would be B. And we know that the distance from C to A and the distance from C to B would have to be equal to each other because it's the radius of a circle. So I know the position vector of A and I know the position vector of B and I want to find out the position vector of B. What do you think I can do to say that if I'm trying to find out what B is? So let me just add these to my diagram. A is 9 minus 1 minus 14. So A to B is equal to P to B. Okay, good. A to P is the same as going from P to B. And you can just see that from how like symmetrical the diagram is. Um, P, we've just worked out, is 4, 14 minus 4. Uh, whoops, I haven't written that properly. 
all 14 minus 4. And the statement that Sam just said was a to p is equal to p to b. So I'm just going to write that out. a to p is equal to p to b. Now, there's many other ways you could do this. But the way I see this working is, what is a p in terms of letters, in terms of the position vectors? It's p minus a. And this one is b minus p. So if I want to find out what b is, add p to that side. So it's 2p minus a equals b. So all you need to do now is just two lots of p, which is 4, 14 minus 4, and subtract a, which is 9 minus 1 minus 14. So you've got 8 minus 9, which is minus 1, 28 plus 1, which is 29, and minus 8 plus 14, which is 6. So you get the position vector of b is 1, minus 1, 29, 6, which I hope is what the answer was. Yeah. yeah? So this one, the diagram really, really helps. Sam was um, in the study club after school with me, and we were looking at this and we were a bit confused because I was just looking at part C and part D. I didn't read the whole question. The whole question said that they were perpendicular. If they weren't perpendicular, then this fact here, that AP was equal to PB, would not be true. So we had to know the fact that they were perpendicular. The sketch helps us realise that this P is the, um, the bisector. P is um, halfway between A and B, which allows you to do that pattern of saying that AP is equal to PB. Which was the bit you got stuck on, Arafu? Yeah. Part D. Yeah. yeah, did you draw a diagram? No. OK, so it, when it gets to the kind of thing where it starts talking about circles and things, you've got to draw a diagram, especially if we know that the lines are perpendicular, because perpendicular is one of the main properties for geometry that will help us like find patterns, because it's such a specific angle. There's lots of things that we can learn from that one. OK, we'll have a quick look at question 11 as well. So we've got a line and a plane, and we're trying to find out where they intersect, and then we're trying to find the acute angle between them. So you'll notice both of these have been given us into in Cartesian form. So I want to convert the line. I want to convert the line into uh, vector form. What would be the vector equation of this line that I've got here? R equals three minus two. Um, so if you just think about this last one we've got here, if we've got four minus z over one, what could I do to the top and bottom to make it look right? If I multiply them both by like minus one you would get z minus 4 over minus 1. So that's the thing that looks a bit different there, which means that the a part would be a 4, and then the direction part would be 5, 3, minus 1. Okay. So if it doesn't quite look like the thing that it normally looks like, you've got to manipulate it to look like what the standard form of the Cartesian is. And then if we think about what the plane is, what would be the, the equation of the plane? r dot what? 4, 3, minus 2 equals minus 10. How do you find the intersection of a line in the plane? You do the, sorry, the sine minus tan. No, no, I'm talking about intersection, not angle. No, no, yeah, you do the r. You basically just put the line there. You put, you put that in there. And you dot it with this, and you make it equal 10. So when we combine this, we get 3 plus 5 lambda minus 2 plus 3 lambda, and 4 minus lambda. And I'm going to put that thing in there. OK? So you get 3 plus 5 lambda minus 2 plus 3 lambda and 4 minus lambda, dotted with 4, 3 minus 2 equals 10. So when I expand this, I get 12 plus 20 lambda minus 6 plus 9 lambda minus 8 plus 2 lambda, capital that's plus 2, equals 10. What did I do is minus three? Yeah, oh, thank you. It's supposed to be minus 10. Thank you. So that's 29, 31 lambda. And then I've got 12 minus 6, which is 6, minus 8, which is minus 2. So 31 minus 2 equals minus 10. So 31 lambda is equal to minus 8. This is going to be gross. Minus 8 over 31. So now we have to find out what the position vector of P is by putting lambda into this. So that must mean that p is equal to 3 plus 5 times minus 8 over 31, minus 2 plus 3 times minus 8 over 31, and 4 minus minus 8 over 31, which is 
3 minus 40 over 31, 53 over 51, 53 over 31, sorry, yeah. And then we've got minus 2, minus, tw minus 86 over 31, and then 132 over 31. So that's the position vector of P. Just because it's got ugly numbers, um, I think when you do your UCAS exam or other practice exams, there's going to be a vector question with pretty ugly numbers in it, but just whatever. It just is what it is, okay? And then this is quite a nice recap. If I just sort of squeeze in part B in this section over here, if we're finding the angle between the line and the plane, how do we find the angle between a line and a plane? D dot N over the modulus of D, the modulus of N, and we do the modulus of the whole thing. And what's D in this case? Uh, D is 5, 3, minus 5, 3, minus 1, and N is clearly 4, 3, minus 2. And that's all going to be over the modulus of this, which actually I don't even need to worry about the modulus lines there anymore because clearly the numerator is going to be positive and the denominator is going to be positive. The modulus of this is, what, 25 and 9, which is 34, 35? Root 35, 16, and root 29. And the numerator is 29, 31. So it's 31 over root 35, root 29. So theta is the inverse sign of that, which is what, Ishraq? 76.7 degrees. OK. So the wrong. Oh, is the textbook wrong? The textbook is possibly wrong. So sometimes the textbook is wrong, but then Solution Bank is right. And sometimes the textbook is wrong, Solution Bank is wrong, but we're right. It's really annoying. It is really annoying, okay?